Okay, so how do you do a large area using LiDAR? You know, your typical LiDAR collection is going to be around 40 to 80 acres, and some of these projects are up into 1,000, 2,000 acres. So the question we're going to answer today is, do we do it all at once, or do we break it into parts? How do we do that? And then inside of UGCS, how do we actually make that software work? What are the pitfalls, and what are the advantages of all the methods that we're going to show you today? So stay tuned, and let's get flying here. Okay, so, you know, a lot of folks, you know, are used to photogrammetry and uh, being able to do large mass projects, and that's fine. And what we're seeing here today is, okay, what if I got a large project? What are we going to do here? So what I'm going to do is share my screen with you guys, and I've already mapped out a project here. This is one of our test ranges in San Diego, um, and I'm cheating a little bit. I've got a <laughs> Mavic 2 Pro on the, on the instead of... Um, uh, instead of like a 300 or 600, most of those are out on rentals right now. So if you're not cheating, you're not trying, right? Anyway, with that said is, so I have this huge uh, area set up here. And right now when we look at UGCS, I'll pull this up. Yeah, we're looking at about 80 to 90 acres. So, and if I was to look at the duration, it's telling me it's going to be an hour and a half to actually complete that. So that's really not realistic from, from a drone standpoint, unless we're using an electric gas hybrid. How are we going to do this? So a lot of folks are going to, at least in the traditional method, would be just set this whole area up. Uh, and you can see there's a lot of waste that actually happens here. Even though I have mapped out and cut this in, um, I'm leaving a lot, I'm mapping a lot of area that I may not necessarily need. Uh, also, you know, this is a lot of extra time out in the field. We're wasting money and we're wasting field time, which is the most expensive part of a project. But you know, so let's just say on method number one is that we're just going to do a continue or a flight following. So since I'm already set up here, I'm going to, I've already linked it up. I've got my Wi-Fi set up here and you can see that I've got my drone uh, already on the pad ready to go. So with that said, I'm going to upload. We're going to continue and I get this, uh, I get this warning right in here. Of course, 99 points, but here I get to start from the beginning or I get to uh, set up a start from waypoint. So I'm gonna cancel out of this just so I don't do anything here. As you can see here, um, you know, I've got all these different points. So what I can do when I upload, ignore that again, is I could come in here and type in that, like, let's say I was going to fly to point 14. Um, and so I take off from the first fly to point and I would go ahead and hit upload. And that would actually push this all through here. Now, why wouldn't I want to do it that way? And, and some, some of you, if you're doing photogrammetry missions, that might be okay. If you have seen this terrain over here, uh, you can see that, you know, I'm dealing with quite a bit. Like if you look at my side profile, I've got a lot of hills and, and all that. Um, cause I never use, <laughs> when I do projects, they never end up on the flat. Um, and so with that said is that if I go ahead and hit go, the way that the terrain follow works is it does approximation of, um, of of the train that we're following, and that if that's if that's the case, when I hit go, it's going to launch off from here. It's going to maintain that altitude until it gets to my collection area, and then it will start flight following. So the big problem with it is if I have a hill in between, I have not given the drone any guidance information whatsoever. Um, so it's more likely to collide into the terrain unless, of course, the obstacle avoidance features of that drone are working. So let's try something else. Um, now that we have that, we're going to turn this one off. The other method that I recommend here, folks, whoops, here I'm locking everything up. Let me shut that off, turn that on. There we go. Let's turn these on. So now I've started to divide my project up here. Um, and so if I look at, for you guys, I made you all your own special flight plan today. Uh, so we're talking about 27 minutes on YouTube number two to go ahead and collect in that feature down here. And then if I go ahead and do the next one, which we just click on it, you know, I'm going to be collecting for 26 minutes. But you can see all this extra area that I'm not actually covering. And what does that actually allow me to do? That allows me to further plan uh, this mission. So 26 minutes is a pretty accurate time for lighter collection for the lighter, for the lighter sensors with the newer batteries. Um, and by that way, I can actually control and I'm actually operating safely 
versus trying to push that last little bit out. Um, and then I can come in here for my second one and uh, load that one. And all I had to do is provide some overlap so that I can match one project to another. Um, so that's how you go ahead and break those down. So if you want to do it all in one big swath and you think you can get away with it or you're in the flat or something like that, go for it. You see how to load that in there and resume from fly two point. Um, but if you are operating in train uh, and in a lot of different uh, geometries, then you're going to want to tile or segment your data sets based on the terrain and based on what is actually safe for you to operate. Okay, you're going to have to change batteries anyways. Uh, you're going to have to load. So this makes it a little bit easier uh, when you're in the field and you make sure you come back with your expensive payload fully intact. Now, if you would like to know more about how to do planning like this, how to handle big projects, I'm going to leave a link in below to attend the LiDAR planning workshop. And to give you a little bit of insight on that, what we do uh, is that we cover how to bid for a project, how to determine the appropriate point density for your project, um, that's all your flight parameters, whatever, how to do planning like this, um, how to tile around or segment in for a lot of different segments. And yeah, we are running low. Nope, we're good. Um, how to plan for different segments. And then, um, and then at the very end, after we get through accuracy and all that, how do we actually price and bid so that you can convey to your customer the price that you deserve, convince them the accuracy they're supposed to be, and, and get more money. So that's really what that's about. So if this has served you well, please like it and share with your friends. That's the only way the YouTube engine actually knows that we exist over here. Um, you know, and if this is helpful, leave a comment below. Tell me what you liked or tell me if you have questions uh, about how to do this, whether you're using UGCS or you're using other flight control systems that do train follow. With that, guys, I will see you guys in the next help video that I put out. Take care.